Hey Stitchers, your girl Chris here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel on social where we are free to absolutely obsess over sewing. Now, if this is your first time in my space, welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope that you will enjoy what you see here and that you will consider coming back. If you are an OG and you have been here week after week after week for video after video after video, thank you guys so much for sticking by me, for trusting me to entertain and educate you. It means a lot, a lot, a lot to me. Now, I am back, you guys, to share with you part two of my So Frugal 2024 sewing project entry make. Now, I initially intended to do one video, one behind the sew on this So Frugal 2024 um, make, but that the video was just too long, you guys. I started editing it and was like, whoo! child this is a movie and not a video and so I went ahead and decided to cut it into two parts so the first part I shared with you the pattern that I am working on which is the um Tessuti Fabrics multi-elastic waist skirt and I shared with you the hack that I wanted to do to the skirt which is to go ahead and transform it into a skirt with tears an exposed ruffle and a drawstring at the waistline now if you have no idea what I'm talking about and you want to get all caught up I'll go ahead and drop the link in right here so you can refer yourself to part one and if you have no idea what the so frugal challenge is at all then i was a part of the vlogging tour for this year's so frugal 2024 challenge and my video debuted on the 27th of march and in that video i shared with you five free patterns that were hackable highly hackable and i shared of course my ideas for hacking those patterns so if you're curious about that video i'll go ahead and pop that one in as well so that you can easily go and reference it now, all of the videos that I'm referring to, I'll also leave them down below in the description box so that you can find them with ease. Now, as I said, we're moving on to part two and part two of this um, video series is going to focus on the construction of the skirt. Things I was doing, mistake that I might have made and how I possibly recovered from said mistake. You guys, I thought this was going to be such an easy hack, but I did have a hiccup and I did make a mistake, so I'm going to share that with you um, in this video. And I'm also going to share with you how I managed to rescue my make. And with any hope, at the end of this video, you'll be able to see the reveal of my pattern hack and what will end up being my entry into the So Frugal 2024 challenge. Now, in case it's not yet the 31st of March by the time this video goes live, then it means that you'll have to check back on the 31st of March, either here or over on my Instagram to see that reveal. Because as I said, the entry date for your final project is the 31st of March. So just in case your girl is able to get all this content together in time, then, um, you might have to wait to see it then on the 31st of March. Now, just before we get into all of that, let me share with you quickly what I'm wearing today. I'm wearing the Love Notions Melody Dolman Top Witch Your Girl Pattern Hat. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Now, I am also a Love Notions ambassador. If you use my code on social, then you can save yourself a couple bucks off on any Love Notions patterns. There is a Feature Friday series, which means that every Friday um, we feature a particular pattern. And on that Friday, my 10% discount can be stacked to create an even bigger discount on whatever the Feature Friday pattern is. So as I said, I'm wearing the Melody Diamond Top. I did hack it to create this slip bag with a tie at the back. Um, so if you like this top and you might want to consider hacking it or you just want to make it up as is, then be sure to go ahead and use my code. So now that you know what I'm wearing and your curiosity has been satisfied, let's get into this video, shall we? All right, so this is my front skirt here and I still need to go ahead and just remove my selvage edge. Before I do that, I am going to use just some magic tape that looks like this. And I'm going to stick it on my um, front tier, like so, so that I can put a mark in F R. This is just so that I can quickly identify the right side as opposed to the wrong side of my fabric. My selvage edge has been removed. And the first thing that the instructions ask you to do is to mark the notch three and a quarter inches from the skirt top. So I'm just going to mark it here with my charcoal liner and then I'm just going to put a tiny snip into my fabric. And this is what's going to fold over and create the casing piece 
for our waistband area. The next step is then to mark um, a notch eight and a half inches away from the top of the skirt. So I'm just lining up my ruler and placing a mark eight and a half inches away from the top of the skirt right here. And I'm going to go ahead and place a second snip, just like so. This is going to be where the top of our pocket will line up. Now, when I'm installing pockets, I do like to go ahead and add just a narrow strip of interfacing to the inside um, side seam area of my skirt pieces just to reinforce my fabric and stop my pockets from stretching out. Now, this is Ankara fabric, and so it's pretty stable to begin with, but it's even more important if you're working with something a little bit more um, drapey or slippery or something like, say, a viscose or maybe a linen or something like that that will stretch out much easier much easier it's always a good idea to just interface where your pocket bags will go so i'm going to go ahead and do that now my interfacing is in and it's time now to add the pockets now as i said my pocket bags have basically been constructed i'll just need to go ahead and like finish them back off and so to follow the pattern instructions i'm just going to place the right side of one pocket bag to the right side of my skirt piece lining up the top of my pocket bag with the notch that I put in in my fabric which is just about here yeah because that is where my interfacing is so I'm going to pin it into place take it to my machine and then stitch them together using the um, half an inch seam allowance that the pattern instructions stipulate now I know I said that I was going to use five eighths of an inch seam allowance throughout this project but I think I'm just going to use the half an inch seam allowance as per the instructions because this pocket installation is just a little bit different to my traditional pocket um, installation. And I don't think the additional um, quarter of an inch that I will get at the front of my skirt is going to end up being a big deal. So again, even though I said earlier that I was going to use a five eighths of an inch seam allowance, I am going to follow the instructions and attach my pocket to my skirt using a half an inch half of an inch seam allowance all right so i've got one pocket in and can i tell you this way of um constructing the pocket was new to me i think i've seen one or two people do this pocket construction before but i've never given it a try myself and it did take me longer than my usual pocket installation but um it's pretty neat it does look pretty neat from the outside so who doesn't like pockets? I still can't get over the fact that some people will answer that question with a I don't like pockets answer. Anyways, um, just before I go ahead and close up the other side, I think I'm going to go and mark in the lines for my casing right from one side of my side seam right around to the opposite side, just because I think it's easier to do it in the flat than in the round. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to put in the other pocket. I have put in some markings for my casing just on the front piece of my skirt because I want to go ahead and add some eyelets right off the center front skirt. Now, the reason I want to do that is because, as I said, I want to introduce a drawstring and it's going to need to have something for the drawstring to come out through. So I can either put a buttonhole in or I can put the eyelet in, but I think I'm leaning towards the eyelet. Now, putting it in at this point will mean that I'm going to probably have to use um, my zipper foot when I'm edge stitching, when I'm sorry, top stitching my skirt casings into place when I get to the eyelets. Um, but it has to go in now. They can't go in once you fold your facing on itself. So I'm going to have to go ahead and add my eyelets. Now, I don't have anything smaller than um, this one, which is a 10 millimeter grommet or eyelet. So I'm just going to use what I have. Now, I have recently shown on this channel a tutorial on how to go about installing grommets. So if you haven't seen it and you want to know how to go ahead and put these in to fabric, then you should probably go, go ahead and check that video out. I'll leave the link in again somewhere here just so that you can have easy access to this tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and figure out how I'm going to put my grommets in and then I'm going to continue by closing up my two side seams. 
All right, so I know one of you was looking at that clip just now and screaming, Chris, don't do it. Chris, 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 don't do it. But guess what? You didn't scream loud enough and I did do it. You guys, I screwed up my project. <sighs> so what happened was, the first thing that I did wrong was, I can't find the punch for my snap tool and I used my scissors but then I didn't have my small snips near to hand so I used my regular shears and by using my regular shears I ended up cu cutting the hole for my eyelet too big and you guys this is the result can you see that there is a hole on the outside of my grommet do not make this mistake I repeat, do not make this mistake. You guys, laziness never pays. And I lecture my daughter about that all the time. And there I was being lazy and I ruined my project. So as a good sewist and a good pattern hacker, at least I think so, I was trying to figure out how I could probably salvage my make. I considered, hmm, maybe patching it up somehow or cutting it off somehow and then i realized but wait my grommets are not on the right side of my facing so you guys Daddy, this is a turnover fit can you hear my son calling me in the middle of my video <laughs> yes mikhail so as i was saying this is a fold over facing and so the top part of the skirt is actually folded over to create the facing like this and then it's top stitched on this side so this is going to be the inside of my skirt so in any event you guys i went ahead and put my grommets on the wrong side of my skirt piece now given that i screwed up the grommet this is probably a good thing but then it means that instead of doing my drawstring casing that i had contemplated i'm going to have to revert to the original pattern instructions and just do the elastic casing for my waistband that is i think the only way i can save this project um, right now i can't really lose too much off the top of my waist because that will then mess with where the pockets are and it will make my skirt extremely short and i only wanted a two-tier skirt and not a three-tier skirt so i think my best course of action is just going to be to finish off the waistband as the pattern instructs you to oh there goes my hack but then at least i'll have a wearable skirt at the end of it but i'm tired i already made a mess of it and so i think i'm gonna call it quits for the minute and get back to it mm, maybe tomorrow if i don't feel discouraged and deflated as i sometimes do and sort of put my projects in the naughty corner and then they sit there forever and ever and ever, amen. Except that this particular project cannot sit forever and ever and ever, amen, because I have a deadline, because this project has to be finished and published before, I think, not before, on the 31st of March, I think is reveal day. So I'm just gonna let it chill out for a bit and then I'll get back to it. Can you all hear that? Silence. Well, silence plus nature. And in these parts, this is about as close to silence as you're gonna get. My entire household is sleeping. And I should be in bed because I got a job and I work tomorrow. And I gotta get up when my alarm goes off. But instead of sleeping, I am up trying to beat this project into submission. So I told you guys in the last clip that I had screwed up my project. And I put it in the naughty corner, but she didn't stay on time out very long because she was living rent free in my mind, trying to figure out what was the next step that I wanted to take. So I spent the last mm, hour and a half or so trying to figure out how to sort of rescue this pattern because you guys, I need to finish this project and I need to finish this project fairly well um, so that I can share it with you guys and say, hooray, I did it. So this is where I'm at. I'm going to step back and I hope you guys can see 
this is what my skirt is looking like at the moment. So don't be alarmed. I am wearing pajamas because as I said, it's bedtime. But I wanted to try on the first tier of my skirt just to see what it looks like. So we have pockets and you can see that my pocket bags actually hang out below tier one. But once I attach tier two, this won't be a problem anymore. So um, you might also notice that on this side, the elastic is not, um, it's not as gathered. And that is just because I haven't evened out my elastic at the waist yet. I need to go ahead and finish my casings because I didn't follow in the instructions and I didn't leave the openings in my side seam for the elastic. So when I was doing my casing, I did have to go ahead and leave gaps so that I could thread my elastic through the casing. So I need to go ahead and close up those gaps. Once I close up my gaps, then I can go and sort of like even out the elastic right around my waistline. But given where I was like a couple hours ago, I think, I think I'm okay with where I'm at now. Um, I'll show you my eyelets. Um, they are on the inside of my skirt now towards my stomach. And given that I messed up my eyelets in terms of the size of my hole that I showed you guys earlier, I'm thinking maybe it isn't such a bad idea that I put my eyelets in the wrong spot. Because if they were in the right spot and the fabric was larger, the hole, I beg your pardon, was larger than my eyelid, then I don't know. I probably would have just cried, you guys. I don't think there would be any coming back from that. So I guess every curse is a blessing. Every, what is it? Every blessing is a curse. Every, cur every curse is a blessing. Whatever. The point is, it's a good thing that my screw up turned out to be on what is now the wrong side of my facing. I just won't have the drawstring in the middle casing that I envisioned. Um, I guess once I have my waistline sorted, I could make a bow and sort of just tack it on at the front and then I can tie it as I like and give that sort of faux drawstring effect. But I don't know, I think I need to just get through finishing off this skirt and then I'll see at the very end where I'm gonna go ahead and put in like that drawstring sort of thing. So crisis averted, barely, and this is where your girl is at. So I'm at a comfortable spot now and I can finally go to bed and that's exactly what I'm about to do. So I'll catch you on the rebound. So work is continuing on this project. I went ahead and finished the raw edge of my skirt mane, which is tier one. And on tier two, I did do the um, serger edge on one side. And whilst I was doing it, I thought perhaps I should do a rolled hem on the opposite side, which would save me some fabric. And I would no longer need to like turn it under and finish it off for my skirt. So that's what I ended up doing, a rolled hem which is now the top of tier number two. And I've done all my gathering and you guys, this took me forever. It's so much material. And now I somehow have to attach tier two to tier one. So wish me luck. All right, so I have pinned it into place. And can I tell you guys, this has been such tedious work, but I think I like how it's looking. So I'm just gonna take it to my sewing machine now and top stitch on my tier two to my tier one. Right, so my ruffle tier has been attached. I just attached it using, I think, my presser foot as a guide. So I don't even know what the exact measurement is. Let's see. Just about at a half of an inch um, seam allowance from the top. And I'm pretty happy with how it has turned out. It was more time consuming than I thought than I thought it would be but I think it's cute and I also went ahead and just did a double fold hem on the um, second tier. Now when I did my calculations I had measured my hem to be one and a half inches in depth but I forgot you guys when I was hemming it and just did my standard narrow hem so my hem has taken up just about a five eighths of an inch seam allowance because it is just about a quarter inch double folded, but of course, um, it wasn't done accurately because I used my 
serger threads as a guide so my hem allowance probably is like between half an inch and five eighths of an inch um, seam allowance instead of the one and a half inch seam allowance that I had allotted for when I did the measurements which means that my skirt is probably a little bit longer um, than I wanted because I don't know I don't know why that missed me when I was doing my hem now I also went ahead and did a drawstring so this is a faux drawstring and I sort of just tacked it on right down the center front because as I said I missed up the grommet situation and so I just tacked it down so that I can tie it into a drawstring so that was the last little bit that I had to do on this skirt oops I've forgotten how to, to tie you guys right there we go so that was the last bit I had to do on my skirt and now we can try it on and see what we have ended up with now I'm finally getting to share with you the reveal so I'm going to step back so that you can see hopefully you can see it in full but I'll also be sure to go ahead and drop in some pictures or some twirls or something so that you can have a full appreciation for my completed skirt. You guys, I love it. I feel like you hear me say that a lot, but it is so true. I love this skirt. And even though this pattern is supposed to be an easy pattern, I guess because I pattern hacked it, I complicated the thing. Obviously, it's me we're talking about. And I did make a huge mock-up on my skirt. Now, for my skirt, I did shorten the length of the skirt. It is originally designed to be a midi or a maxi length skirt. And I shortened it to just about by my knee. Initially, I wanted my skirt to be above the knee. But in calculating it, I did do my usual knee length calculation. And perhaps I should have made it a little bit shorter so I could show a little bit more leg but i'm not really disappointed i think i like the finished length of it i think that my garment turned out pretty cool and kind of chic i did introduce a tear to my skirt and i did an exposed ruffle now i have seen patterns before that have an exposed ruffle tear but i have just never sewn one up and i don't even know why most of the times i would see this feature and just completely ignore it and have just sewn up my tears right sides together and just had you know that usual integrated um, gathered tear effect but when I was dreaming up the pattern hack for this make for some reason I just couldn't shake from my mind doing this exposed tear and I'm super super happy that I did it did take me a little bit more work both in the um, cutting and sewing of this pattern but I really do like the finish effect now I also went ahead and added pockets to my skirt and you'll be pleased to know that my pockets are upcycled pockets so I recently made a skirt for someone else and I had included pockets in it. To my surprise, you guys, not everybody likes pockets and she didn't like the pockets. So I went ahead and unpicked them. I had put them to the side on my sewing table and I was pretty pleased that I had them so that I could install them in this skirt. I do find the pocket opening to be just a little bit tight and I did follow the instructions for the pocket installation in this skirt. Now, it is not the usual pocket installation that I do, but in this pattern, the pocket bags are attached only to the front skirt. And I can't say that I love this way of installing pockets. I mean, I found it to be a little bit time consuming, at least more time consuming than my usual pocket installation method. And I don't know, I just don't know if all that extra time was worth it in the end. And as I said, if I were to make this again, then I would definitely want to widen the opening for my pockets. Other than that, I did this faux drawstring on my skirt. I had originally wanted to have an integrated um, casing for my drawstring, but you guys, I just made a mess of it when I was putting my skirt together. I had miscalculated some things and I just wasn't able to do it. And so I almost didn't have a drawstring on my skirt, but when I completed it, it just felt very unfinished to me. Not because the skirt was unfinished at all, because obviously it was not. It's an elastic waist skirt. I could have worn it just as is. But because I had had in my mind that I wanted this drawstring channel in my skirt, I just had to figure out a way to incorporate it. So what I did in the end is I made up my drawstring and I tacked it on right at the center front of my skirt. And then I just tied it together. So if I untie it, you can see it's just tacked on right here in my center front. And then I was just able to do my tie. And with this drawstring, I think it just adds just a little extra touch to my skirt that I really, really appreciate. 
Now, in terms of styling my make, I decided to style it with this top, which is an upcycled top as well. Now, I made this top back in, I think, September last year, just after the Barbie movie sort of just blew up. And I wanted to add this embroidery motif to it. And I felt like this Barbie embroidery motif was just so relevant at the time and so cute. And so that is what I ended up doing. I also went ahead and introduced shoulder pads into this top. Um, in case you don't know, it's just a regular Hanes t-shirt and it actually belonged to my husband, but I wanted to do this upcycle and so I nicked it off him and this is what I came up with. And I just figured that this upcycled shirt would pair beautifully with my skirt and since it's a so frugal challenge, nothing new you guys, this is just an upcycled t-shirt. So let me know down below what you think of my look and more importantly, what you think of my pattern hack. Would you consider hacking the Tessuti fabrics a multi elastic waist skirt in the way that I did. Have I inspired you guys to give this pattern a try? Please be sure to go ahead and let me know down below. Now, if you like this video and you like my outfit, then be sure to go ahead and give me a thumbs up because I like it and you guys, Hobby actually liked it as well. When he was taking my photographs of me, he turned and said to me, But you know what? You're kind of cool. And you guys, obviously that got me blushing so he earned extra points from me that day because of that fabulous compliment now if you have gotten this far in my video and you are not yet a subscriber then let me ask you what you do what are you doing subscriptions cost you absolutely nothing but they do guarantee you a spot right here in my sewing community on youtube and i love 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 having you guys here with me so that's all i wanted to share with you all today so until next time stay calm stay cool, stay safe, and absolutely keep sewing. Peace.